All right, hello everyone and welcome back to Kotobo Space Program, where today we are having a look at the Kurbanov Can 2 Cockpit Module Continued Mod, which was originally made back in the day by forum user Sam Hall. It is now being resurrected by, of course, none other than Linux Guru Gamer. And what this glorious little piece of work looks to add into the game is, well, as the name of the mod suggests, the Kurbanov Can 2 Cockpit. But not just that it also adds in a lovely little list of other space plane parts to help you build some more interesting aircraft. So let's jump right on into the space plane hangar and have a look at what we do get. Now let's grab ourselves a Mark I inline cockpit and then turn on our mod filter, just leaving on Kurbanov, and we'll start with the namesake of the mod, the KN2 cockpit here. And it too is an inline cockpit, and I do, I do always enjoy having more of them, and is overall a very interestingly designed thing, very beautifully modeled and textured. I do very much enjoy it, and its stats are pretty good. It has uh, a crew capacity of three Kerbals, minimum of one to operate, has built-in data transmitter, reaction wheel, crew report, science experiment, 120 electric charge, and 20 mono propellant. But the real star of this thing, frankly for me, is the interior. It's gorgeous. You basically have a pilot and co-pilot seat up here in the actual cockpit section, but then you have this interior crew compartment in the back that is just beautiful. The whole thing is very nicely put together, amazingly detailed. I very much do like it. Though I have to admit, even though this is the namesake of the mod, I actually prefer this cockpit more. The KN7 cockpit, which is very unique as it's, uh, well, it got a really cool design to it. Again, very beautifully modeled and textured. But the fun part of it for me, it uses the Mark II cockpit, or uh, rather fuselage design, that's just turned on its side. And I like the possibilities of that. It's very cool. I do really like that, especially with a payload part we'll see here in a little bit that offers up some interesting opportunities. Now, again, this is a three-person command pod with a minimum of one to operate, built-in data transmitter, reaction wheel, crew report, 20, or 200, rather, electric charge, and a mere 10 mono propellant. And finally, here in the cockpit section, we have the Heavy Duty Command Seat with the built-in reaction wheel, SAS, and 30 electric charge. And, well, it's just like the normal command seat, just heavy duty with a lovely little uh, roll cage built around it. It also does have a nice little instrumentation panel there. And all in all, a very cool design, opening up a lot of possibilities for that command seat sort of uh, style as well. It already has a body built around it, so you can very easily turn this into, say, a small little plane, a rover, what have you, just whatever the mind thinks might be interesting. And does, of course, have a front uh, attachment point as well as a rear one for your usage. And interestingly, unlike the normal command seat, this can actually be the first part you place. It can be the root part, which is always fun. Now, next in fuel tanks, we have a couple of fun things. The first being the X204 fuel tank, which is just a big round fuel tank. Nothing too special there. It's just a thin fuel tank, holding 180 liquid fuel and 220 oxidizer. What's far more interesting to me, though, is the T-1600 fuel tank here, which, even though it is just, again, a round, long fuel tank holding 720 liquid fuel and 880 oxidizer, I actually really like this one because it's not just a solid cylinder. It actually has some, you know detail to it. It starts off, it indents itself a bit there, raises back up, indents again, and just kind of goes back and forth like that. I just, I like that little additional detail. It makes it more intriguing than just a solid cylinder. But what's even more exciting than a detailed fuel tank is drop tanks. I love drop tanks. When you no longer need the fuel tank, 
why not lose it? And this now allows you to have it in either a 50 liter size, a 150 liter size, or a 400 liter size. And it's, yeah, a fuel tank that has a built-in decoupler to just release itself from your spacecraft. Always good. A very handy thing to have. Now, next in engines, we only have two things in here. The first being the J6 Pinwheel RC Micro Turbojet. And it is a, just a tiny, tiny little jet engine. There you go. It'll produce a maximum of 7 kilonewtons of thrust using liquid fuel and air intake. Has its own built-in air intake, of course, and also a small alternator. And yeah, it's just a tiny, tiny little jet engine. Potentially could go quite nicely with the heavy-duty command seat here. There you are. Ideas, folks. Good ideas. We also, though, have the rocket-assisted takeoff booster, which is just a small solid rocket booster producing 50 kilonewtons of max thrust using solid fuel to give you a little bit of oomph for your takeoff. Or alternatively, if you know you're going to have a short one runway, why not a little bit of oomph in the reverse for braking? Could be entertaining. But either way you go, it's just, you know, a fun little rocket booster for you to just use however. And then in command and control, we have two different RCS blocks. The first one being the modified self-contained probe RCS, which there we are. Pop that on there, as well as just the self-contained RCS. Now they're more or less identical. Frankly, I mean, just slightly different designs, as you can see here. Uh, this one having those uh, RCS nozzles sort of angled outwards, and then the two on the other sides being straight out, whereas this one is all straight out. But other than that, they both have the same stats and both have five built-in monopropellant of their own to use. Now, next in structural, sadly, nothing. Coupling, we do have a tiny little radial micro decoupler. A perfect decoupler for perhaps use with the uh, little booster here, or really whatever tiny little thing you need to separate from your ship. Now, next in payload, oh uh, yeah, this, this is fun. It's, uh, it's a side-loading cargo bay in the Mark II fuselage style, which if we put there, is effectively a bomb bay door for this lovely cockpit that this mod has. And I love that. I love that. So many possibilities with that. And then of course we have the uh, larger sized version of it, which we can pop on right there, so that we can have an even larger bomb bay door. And that, that is wonderful. Now, next in aerodynamic, we have two different grid fins, a, a large grid fin and then a small grid fin. There you are. They have identical stats and everything except for, of course, the extended relative wing area with the small having 0.5 and the large having 1. Again, yeah, being the small and large variants. Then in ground, sadly nothing, nor in thermal or electrical, but in communication, we do have a, a lovely little VHF transmitter. I definitely like the design of this thing. Very cool looking. And then in science, nothing. And finally, utility, we have two parts. The first being the small inline passenger compartment, which is great. It offers you another way to transport personnel in the, uh, you know, standard fuselage style for space planes but only holding, of course, one, being just a nice small compartment. And it does, of course, have a built-in data transmitter and crew report, and also does have a custom interior. And then finally, we have possibly the best part, the hood ornament. It serves no purpose, but looking good. And that is all you need. So let's go and take a look at two different craft that I have constructed. The first being this cockpit, uh, craft here so that we can take a look at all the different interiors. So let's just pop everyone in there and go launch. And I believe it starts in the KN7 cockpit and then it goes to the KN2. Yes, that's how it goes. So let's start in the KN7 here first, go into the interior. Lovely little thing, lots of great detailing, very, very cool cockpit. I do 
Really love this thing. Very nice looking. And of course, we have the second seat here. Again, very good looking, good details. And we can see down into the lower compartment where we have our third Kerbal, who's basically, you know, in like a little just, I guess, I don't know, engineering bay. It doesn't really look too comfortable for passengers, but I mean, you know, it works. We have an airlock. That's always nice. And then, moving on to the CAN-2 cockpit, much larger, roomier cockpit up here, good visibility out the windows, good detailing everywhere, second seat here, very nice, and then the crew compartment in the back, which you can kind of see there on the uh, left-hand side, the door that goes back, and then if we go back there, we can see up to the cockpit. Lovely. We have an airlock right here. Always make sure to check your helmets before opening. Good advice. And the lovely little bed. Gotta love it. Especially, especially the sheeting. Very nice. But yes, a lovely little uh, crew compartment so you can switch out your crew on long voyages. Very nice. I love the detailing on this. And finally, we have that little uh, crew compartment, which is good. We have a little intercom there. Some equipment two little windows. Overall though, not a whole lot of room, but hey, it's for just one Kerbal. It's all you need. And then of course we got our Kerbal right up there in the heavy duty uh, command seat. Unfortunately, of course, we can't look through his eyes, but it's just nice having him in there. And yeah, just so many possibilities with this little command seat. You could easily turn it into a rover, a tiny little space plane, or a little space taxi to go between space stations. Just so many, so many wonderful things with a pre-built little body like that. Gotta love it. But let's actually revert flight back to the space plane hangar and actually take off a plane that I made with this too. So let's load up, I believe. Yeah, I just called it the, uh, the cockpit that it's made from. There we go. Crappy little plane, but hey, it should work. I added a lot of those tiny little RC turbojet engines onto this thing. They don't produce a lot of thrust, but each one of them is a little bit of thrust to help you out. So let's, uh, let's roll. We got a whole line of those tiny little engines, four of the boosters. So let's activate the boosters in three, two, one, take off. Throttle up. I'm not going to start the engines quite yet because I just want to see how fast the boosters will get us up to because I actually haven't flown this thing yet. Let's see if it works. But man, we are getting up to a pretty steady clip. Oh, there it goes. Over 150 meters per second. Let's start our engine and hope we we have enough speed for takeoff. We should, we should, we should. Oh, we did it. There we go. Bring up the landing gear. It got a little squirrely there at the end, but you know what? We won. And yeah, so we have a lovely little aircraft here. A very fun new addition. I, I really do love that cockpit. It's just, I think, a great little thing to add into the game. It's a cool styling, great interior. And all the other parts we get with it are also fun. Just imagine all the cool uses of tiny little jet engines like this. Or, of course, the new inline crew compartment there. Or even, of course, the drop tanks. Let's drop off the uh, small tanks here. There they go. And then, of course, the large tanks. Now, they were full of fuel that I could have used in this flight, but... Oh well, it's not like this flight's gonna last long anyways. So yeah, that is it for this mod. If you would like to check it out for yourself, which I would definitely recommend you go and do, you can have a look at the link in the description as per usual. But that is going to be it for today. I hope you all have enjoyed and uh, yeah, that you do come back for the next episode when hopefully we'll be looking at yet another wonderful mod. But until that time, thank you for watching. And as always, have a good one. Now I've put this thing into a death spin. Oh, you poor Kerbals. Later, folks.